So I just want to share with you this presentation from Ruati. Actually, this is a company that professionally helps to make persuasive presentations. So they do it professionally. You can hand them over your presentation and they turn it around. So they help you to pimp the slides. I'll just share with you five ways that they suggest that can help us to pimp our slides. So one, we need to break away from the traditional bullets. And this is this is a typical presentation that has the traditional bullets that we see many times. Well, this is talking about business challenges and uh, yeah, challenges in business. But you see, I'm just going to take you the process of how it was turned around to make it a better slide. So we look at the keywords, they're looking at managing various devices, they're looking at maintaining a provision of, of access, high cost, ensuring security, scalability. So this means that you look at each bullet, think about it, and see how to present the concept better. So again, you, you see they've looked at it again and seen the different, the keywords in that presentation. So probably those are the most important keywords. And as you think about it, these are now, if you have these as your challenges, and these are the keywords. So you can develop that and get away from the bullets. So you find that if you have that circle and you use each of those as, as, as presented there, you can have a figure to present one slide in a better way. So this is another way to look at it. Um, those keywords can be used as this figure, or this is uh, another figure that is used to look at these figures, uh, those keywords again. So basically, it's a mind process of looking at your presentation, synthesizing it, looking at the keywords, and then saying, how can you use different figures to make it? look better. So let's see how this is. So this is a figure. Many of these are available as designs, but we just need to know how to use them. So that's the slide that had bullets. It has now been changed like this, and the person presenting it is able to provide it in a more presentable manner. Then you can use colors if you want to emphasize certain things. This, again, describes the process of how you can be able to do this. Get on your paper and think through it, how you can summarize it. That's one. So the next one is uh, embracing white space, being able to use the contrast, because you know the contrast rather than camouflage. If all things are the same color, then they are camouflaged and the important things are not seen. Using color and contrast helps us to make it visibly attractive. So this is taking advantage of the white background and using the white pictures, which makes them more visible than if it were a black background, for example. That's a similar concept, <coughs> using white background to present dark images. The, last one, uh, the third one is to make one point. Each slide should give one point so that it is emphasized. If you give many messages, then the audience gets confused. It takes a lot of time to synthesize what you're talking about. So this is a beautiful slide that we have seen in some of the presentations. It's talking about, um, so we have the upper part of the slide, you have the middle part of the slide, and you have the lower part. So you have the, you can, you have the, you have us having so many messages that we can't even tell which of them is more important. But let's see how this is split out into, um, this is one slide now. The upper part is talking about, 
savings, it's talking about migration, it's talking about um, availability, repair and responses, and this is mainly about managed services. So this, whatever topic it is, this is one way of reducing the messages that are on your slide. So this is talking about one message. So this is the second part of the slide. So it has been split into the different areas. So they will tell you have five slides, and instead of having five slides, you want to put three slides in one. But if you separate them, the message actually gets across better than you spending five minutes on that one slide. So this is the last part of the slide that is presented in this way. It's also another figure. So you can make it simpler and better for you to explain. Because that one slide takes you five minutes and you struggle to move with the audience through that slide. So the other concept is alignment. And well, this is another looking at the white background, how it can magnify or <coughs> pictures better. So this is the concept of alignment. The mind thinks in rows and columns. So if you present in planes, so if you present things that are not aligning with the way the mind processes things, then it makes it difficult for your audience to follow. So this is just to illustrate that the mind is using the horizontal plane to look at this. So you come from one side of the slide across. So if it's, uh, this is also a plane, you come from this side. This is another plane, horizontal plane. And let's see how it can be used. Because if you look at this presentation now, there are different planes. It's going down, it's going this side. So it's using both planes in one slide. That creates a bit of confusion in the audience. So these are the different planes that the mind is looking at before it understands your presentation. If you put the presentation in that, in those kind of planes, you make it easier for people to understand. <coughs> Let's see how we can do it. So it is, this concept is illustrated by using these pictures. So these pictures are talking about, I think, farming methods, and they are dropped on the slide in different planes. They are not in any order. So using the alignment concept, the pictures can be seen or appreciated better if, using, if we are putting them in those planes. So this is one of the pictures that is actually organizing them using the playing model and it looks better than the first one. This is another one that is using the vertical plane. Yes. And of course you can contrast that with that where nothing is emphasized. So the fifth one is to tell the truth. How do you tell the truth? How do you present your data? in a way that it can be appreciated. So this is a graph, again, a common, uh, a common theme in your presentations. You can easily make this more visible by just putting the, the number, the percentage. Because as you present, someone is trying to see, OK, is it at 45, or is it 38? That six and that takes away time from your audience to concentrate on what you're speaking because they are trying to verify the figures. If you do it before that, you make it a lot easier. This is another figure, similar, and you can actually see that this figure where the numbers are, it's, uh, it's using the scale. You have used the scale up to 50 so that people are struggling to see where your bars end. So the second figure has actually used a smaller scale so that each bar goes
goes to the number where it's supposed to be. So that again depends on you to make it more, more presentable. Why should you use a scale? You can adjust your data depending on the scale to make it more presentable so that you make it easier for the audience. They don't want to do calculations as they listen to you. So you also have to make the meaning clear. If you want to show trends, then you show figures of trends. So this is a figure that is showing trends, the second one, but I think the, the third one is clear. It is just showing the trends and using a different color to show it. Colors can also be used to emphasize. These are, for example, these are plots, but if you have a particular area of interest, you can change the color so that you focus the audience into the spot that you want them to concentrate on. So that is a similar way of how you can adjust your results to make them more understandable. Another way of focusing the audience is using this kind of plots, heat maps or plots that show. Different colors are there, but the size of the plot is also showing the magnitude of the effect. Especially with small numbers, you see, between one and two, how can you tell the difference? But if you show the frequencies using these kind of balls, it helps the public to know why is this ball smaller, why is that small, why is that ball bigger, and that helps you to present the difference in effect. This is a similar concept, how you can use colors and size of the balls to show the effect in your presentation. And this is just going to show us before and after how these people can turn around the presentation. So this is again another general presentation talking about disaster in the social frame and you see words on this side and figures on this side. This is a common figure, common presentation that you see. Figures on one side and words on one side. But if you do this, what does that do? Sorry? Puts more emphasis on the picture. Yeah, it makes the picture more visible and gives a chance to speak about the picture rather than this. This is another picture using this, blowing the picture and showing it. You can be able to say these words by not putting them here. This is actually what you say, but this makes your presentation better and gives you a chance to explain what is on the figure. So this is another one showing a bar graph. And again, putting the labels helps to focus the audience you can actually put the number in the bar that you want to show. Show the line and show the action number. Then they'll be able to follow. Do not ask, oh, that present, there was this graph. Put back the graph you had, the third graph, so that we understand. No. But they'll see the third graph had 1.8. But you've had those questions. Please show again the slide you are showing. What does that mean? You showed it very fast and the information there was not clear. But who will forget that this slide was emphasized in 1.8? This is another bar. Show it again. So you can also improve this. So you might actually think that this is just used for presentations or data, but we can actually use these skills to even help in our class. Concepts that are in textbooks, your students have read these textbooks and they actually come to class. You don't want to present the same textbook information. You want to present it in a way that they will better understand it. So this is talking about definitions in epidemiology. Many times it is standard practice, you, before you give a topic, you define, give the definitions, right? You have seen it. But how can we present it better? So you define, this is the class, if you've been an, in an epidemiology class, they tell you the definition, they tell you how, what the word means. Then they 
maintain the methods and processes. But look, this can be summarized in a figure like that. After looking at that, you see the concepts, you know, they're talking about epidemiology, it's the method, and these are the different ways to look at epidemiology. Then you can explain to your class in one slide, and you have more time to discuss. Because they have written textbook, the definition is online, but how do you explain it to them? <coughs> this is data. You can actually make the data more presentable by reanalyzing it and presenting it on a bar and creating contrast. So here you have green and white, but if you use dark contrast, people who are very far can see the white. Or whichever contrast you have, a dark contrast with light words makes it better for people to see at the distance. So again, this is another biological concept, talking about viruses, bacteria, and let's see how we can present it in a better way. So this is presented in an interesting way using cartoons. You know viruses, they cause disease, but someone is using humor to present this work. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And you want to know how we present science information in a simple manner. Viruses fall in these categories. Again, using the, the plain, plain concept, presenting this has made it look better. They have also taken, uh, they have also put into use the dark background. So even in one slide you can use the different concepts to present it better. You are looking in the plane, you have a dark background and you have used the white to emphasize your, your pictures. So again, they are using these cartoons to describe what viruses do. They are threats to people, food, water, and equipment. So again, using this, this can be presented better and gives you a chance to explain. So again, our pictures, we are going to see how they can be better presented using the, the concept of lens. If you just throw them on the figure, they don't look that good, and you can start organizing them depending on the ideas you want to present. And this can be done for any concepts, whether you're talking about theatre, practice, class, results, similar to this. This is a better picture than that. So we can go along trying to look at the different presentations, but trying to use these different concepts to make it better. But what we need to understand at this takes time. This is not something that you do at night for your presentation in the morning. Something where you did the presentation first, came the second time, tried to analyze it, and probably the third time putting in the different concepts. So it takes time, yes. <coughs> 